Everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Points of Articulation. My name's Dave, and if you're new to my channel, welcome. Today I'm looking at the Star Wars Titanium series Imperial Landing Craft. Now the Imperial Landing Craft made its first on-screen appearance in Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope. Now as a kid, I fell in love with this ship the first time I saw it playing the game Star Wars Rogue Squadron. I love the design, and I don't know exactly why. It must be the foldable winds on it. it, reminded me of an Imperial shuttle, but regardless, it's one of my favorites and I'm so glad to finally have one. And today's review is actually really special because what we're looking at here is one of the rarer Star Wars Titanium vessels. It's up there with the Liberty, the Nebulon B Frigate, the Outrider, the Punishing One. You know, I would argue it's one of the cheaper of those, but it's rare nonetheless. Now, for those who don't know, the Imperial Landing Craft isn't necessarily a shuttle, but rather a troop transport. And it has a lot of weaponry in the front, and then the sides open up, and you could have vehicles and troops. It's actually really interesting. So for the size of this bad boy, it's a tad under three inches long, which is pretty good for a titanium ship. And you guys know the drill by now. We're gonna take a look at the mold, the paint, put it on the stand, compare it to some other ships, and then we'll be done. So let's get moving. All right, let's kick this review off. Looking at the mold, like always, I will go over the major sections of the ship, and then we'll get a nice close-up look to see all the fine details this baby has to offer. So up first, we have our cockpit with a beautiful window configuration, in my opinion looking cool this section right here should be the troop compartment then we have our dorsal fin which is pretty cool and right here we have a little door that's a troop access door and right here this should open up on top and bottom and that is called the assault ramp and those two hatches here are also on this side you can see the little window there for the door and this would open up for the bigger vehicles or larger complement of troops to exit then moving back we have our engine section, which looks amazing with foldable winds, which is pretty sick. It's one of the reasons why I love these ships, the way that the winds can move. Just nice. I think that looks awesome. Pretty cool. Now for the underneath, we have four screws holding it together. Peg port for the stands, some beautiful detailing. Copyright crap right here. These lines are similar to a Lambda class shuttle with the lines. Right there should be a loading ramp, which is pretty neat. And then in the front, these two sections here should be laser cannons. And these four little holes here should be missile launchers. So that basically covers all the major sections of the landing craft. So now let's get a closer look. All right, having a closer look, we'll begin with the cockpit and move our way back. We can see some nice recessed windows there, beautiful line work and designs. Really a great job. Coming to the back of the troop compartment, we can see some beautiful molding and line work. Little recesses there, pretty cool. And it's basically the same on both sides. Just great looking line work. Beautiful stuff. Coming back to the engineering section. Pretty sick. So real quick, we'll take a look at the dorsal wing. We can see some raised sections, a little recesses, line work, pretty sharp. I think this came out great. And turning it around to the other side. Again, we can see the beautiful detail continues. Nice. Coming to the side of the craft, we can see some beautiful molding again. Right here should be the assault ramp. And then right here we can see a vague window for the troop entrance, or exit if you will. Pretty neat. Coming to the front of the craft, we can see the two recesses where the laser cannons would be. Looking sharp. More line work. Or four crevices for the missile launchers. I guess we could say they're missile launcher tubes. Pretty cool. And real quick, we'll look underneath the cockpit. We can see the copyright crap. Loading ramp. And then nice little details in the front. Then moving to the side. Again, we can see a little window right there. Pretty neat. And then right here should be the other assault ramp. Looking cool. Then the line work and detail continues to the back. So let's take a look at the foldable winds. Looking pretty sharp. Lots of silver on there. But great line work. Again for this side. 
Again, beautiful line work and detailing. Fantastic stuff for the underneath. Looking good. Lots of great little details on there. Lots of silver, too. My God. It's like a glitter wash. <laughs> but it looks good nonetheless. All right, for the bottom of the craft, we'll start by the engine section. We have two screws and beautiful detailing. Look at all that. Actually, it looks like landing gear folded here, doesn't it? I really like the back here. And that goes to the engines, which are basically smooth. They're a little recessed here, but around it looks pretty neat. I like that quite a bit. The paint helps too. Then we have our peg port for the stand. Looking good. Two more screws holding it together. And then look at all this beautiful, beautiful work here. Line work, different modules, beautiful stuff. I think this came out really good down here. Wish the paint was a little cleaner, but what are you going to do? Now, before I move on, I did want to dim the lights because this silver paint on here, this wash, if we want to call it that, really reflects the light quite a bit. So I did want to show off the assault ramp here. As we can see, there is tons of detail there, which is pretty sharp. Then over here, we have the troop entrance, little recess for a window, and then a nice cutout around the door. I love the attention to detail on this ship. And that does it for the mold in short. I love the line work, the molded sections, and the movable winds. This is a great piece. So now let's check out that paint. And now looking at that paint on the Imperial Landing Craft, we have about 10 different colors on this bad boy. First of all, the main color is a nice gray. You can see it best on the bottom and in the front underneath the cockpit. Looking amazing. Then we have an interesting one here. Instead of a black wash, we have total silver wash. There is silver all over this vessel. You can see it just reflects all the light, even on the dorsal fin, the side fin, even on the bottom. The only place that the silver wash isn't is on the side here and on the bottom of the cockpit. As you can see, it doesn't really reflect anything. Maybe weird, but you know what? I'm digging it. Now, we also do get regular silver on the bottom right here in a stripe. Dark gray underneath the cockpit near the loading ramp. Then we have a darker gray going along the bottom and the aft section. And this is the messiest part in my opinion. Just look at that. What a shame. Kind of crappy. Then going to the back, we have blue and white for the engines. Pretty sick. Now, on top of the silver and the gray, we have some black. I like to call it, you know, battle damage. Then we have some tan, looking good, scattered throughout the whole ship. Pretty sick. Then we have black again for our windows in the cockpit. And then finally, we have a little, I would say, dry brushing of gray. We could see some lines coming down here on the dorsal fin, a couple lines on the main body, but the dorsal fin shows it the best. Very interesting paint scheme, I will give it that. So that's everything I have to say about the mold and the paint. So now let's put this baby back on a stand and compare it to some other ships. And just like other Star Wars titanium ships, it comes with a cool stand, peg it in a port like so. And just like that, everybody, you are good to go. And for a quick size comparison with the Imperial Landing Craft seen in the center, on the left, we have the Emperor's Hand Imperial Shuttle. And on the right-hand side, we have the Clone Wars Animated Series Arc Trooper Gunship, which looks amazing. Can't wait to review that for you guys as well. And that does it today for my review of the Star Wars Titanium Series Imperial Landing Craft. Now, it took me over 10 years to get this thing, and just when I ordered it off eBay, it was misdelivered. Thought it was stolen off my port, so I had to wait another week to get it. So getting this thing was a struggle, but I'm so glad I got it. As we looked at, the mold is great, beautiful line work, great little details, and I love the foldable winds. To me, that sells this as a great model. Now for paint, it's 50-50. From a distance, it looks great. We got 10 different colors working together, but when we zoomed in and really looked at this stuff, it's very sloppy, especially that gray on the bottom, which is a shame. 
And we can't forget that awesome Star Wars Titanium series stand, which comes with most of their ships, which really lock it into the collection and make it blend in, and that's awesome. So that's everything I have to say about this awesome ship today. I hope you enjoyed my review. If you did, hit that like button. And if you'd like to see new reviews every Thursday, subscribe. Again, thank you very much for watching. I greatly appreciate it, and I hope to see you next time. Bye, everybody.